The book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 10, also referred to as you see in your screen, the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Verse 11. Though he humble himself and go crouching, Yet take good heed and be aware of him, and you shall be unto him as if you had wiped a looking glass, and you shall know that his rust had not been altogether wiped away. Psalms 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Kahakudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles, great millstone who rule well, who teach this gospel and push this gospel to the four corners of the earth. Peace and salutation to all the elect of the house of Israel. Building the tabernacle of David, the carpenters, Shalom. Now the inspiration for this video comes to me on behalf of a, a uh, an article produced and uploaded to the Newsbreak app platform. And uh, although I had quite a few other videos to work on that Yahweh B'Shem 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 by His Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, had uh, brought to me on last evening. Uh, I seen this video, I couldn't pass it up. This is not a, a hard lesson, it's not a long lesson. I just wanna bring it out. Now, as you can see here, let's go back to our last precept. To rock 12 and 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Now we know, we realize that uh, rust is a byproduct of oxidation. In other words, iron rusts. How? When iron gets uh, down to the bare raw metal component, okay, and uh, water falls upon it or moisture is in the air, it will begin to rust. I don't care how much sanding you do. I don't care how much you paint over it. It's still rusting underneath that coat of paint. Okay, soon or very soon, there will be no metal left there because it will have oxidized and it will have ate all of it away. Okay, so it's like a sore that starts that don't never stop. It's like a sore that, that don't never heal. It's on a one-way street in a one-way direction. Once it starts, it's going, 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 gone. <coughs> now... Let's get to the article right quick. This is not meant to be a very long lesson at all. Okay. Um, Yahweh Bashim Shah says in his word, never trust thine enemy. Now, who is our enemy? Okay, who is our enemy? Let's get it. Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. Verse 48. It's going to tell you who our enemies are. The curses for the house of Israel, okay, for not keeping the laws, statutes, commandments, and ordinances of our Father, our Creator, okay, which we are His chosen people, okay. Um, you can find that fact. Let's get that first. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Let's get that right quick. In fact, let's go, uh, let's go back a little further. Let's go to the Apocrypha. Second Esdras six verse fifty-four. We're gonna start reading at the fifty-third verse because the fifty-third verse is gonna hook in with Genesis chapter six for those of you who believe who don't believe that the apocrypha is part of the Bible. So let's go back to uh fifty-three here. In fact, let's read the chapter. Let's go to verse fifty-three.
Bible to the top of your, top of your screen. Second Esdras, chapter 6, verse 53, coming from the Apocrypha, the King James Version of the Bible, 1611 it was published. Okay. Upon the sixth day, you gave his commandment unto the earth, that before thee it shall bring forth beasts, cattle, and creeping things. Verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom you made Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So all, all people that's on the earth, okay, all people of the different 18 nations of people across the earth come out of Adam, okay? Now, stop. Adam was the first physical man, okay, in the Garden of Eden. But Adam also is who? Yahweh Shah, our Lord and Savior, the first spiritual man. How do I know that? Let's get it. Let's get that right quick. Okay. Now, and we'll come back to this. Okay, watch this. First Timothy. Chapter 2. Verse 9. Let's go to 10. Let's go to 11. In fact, let's go to the chapter right quick. Okay. Um, let's start at verse 12. Okay. The Lord power, Yahweh Shimon Shai, says through the spirit of truth to Timothy, but I suffer a woman, sake, but I suffer not a woman to teach. Teach also means preach. But I suffer a woman not to teach, nor to use of authority over the man, but be in silence. What? But I suffer a woman not to teach, nor use of authority over the man, but to be in silence. Stop. The Lord says to Timothy, by way of the spirit of truth, but I suffer not a woman to teach. Teach is another name for preach, but it's also another name for to proclaim, to make known, right? So the Lord says, I suffer not a woman to teach. So why are there women pastors? Anybody, anybody, uh, help, come on now, help me out now. The Lord says, I suffer not a woman to teach, yet they teach, they, they preach anyway. Can a woman preach? Hell no. It's going to tell you that in, in, the, in the latter part of the scripture. I suffer not a woman to teach, nor use of authority over the man. Use of being authority means being over a man. Why? Because we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and in this chapter as well, and, and I, I, I'll keep on reading because the scripture is going to say it itself. You don't, don't take my word for it. I suffer a woman not, not to teach, nor use of authority over a man, but to be in silence. Verse 13. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. So how in the world she comes second in this creation, right? But then all of a sudden, she got so much to say. And see, I know because see the Lord dealing with me. And, and, see, and see, you can't tell me because see the spirit. Huh? You contradicting the word. Now, somebody don't know what the hell they talking about. Somebody lying. Let's keep on. Watch this. Next scripture. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So Adam was not deceived. Okay. And this story, this, this scripture points back to Genesis chapter 3. You can start at the 6th verse and read on down to about the 16th verse. And you will see where Eve went off. Okay. Now, so Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You remember the Lord says in, in Scripture, he says, why do you call me good? For there's only one that's good, and that's who? Yahweh, our Father, our Creator, right? All right, now, now let's keep on here now. And, and it's highlighted on your screen. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The word transgression means to come against the Lord. How do I know? We're going to read this. Just hold tight. Hold tight. First uh, John. First 
verse 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So you're breaking the commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Okay? Now, I did point out to you, let's go back. Verse 1 Timothy 2 14, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So the woman broke the law. Okay? The woman came against the commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Again, read Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 on down to 15, and you'll see how the woman, Eve, broke the law. you see how that happened. Okay, now, now watch this. Adam was not deceived in that, in that scripture, right? Now watch this. 2 um, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Pay attention now. Uh, let's go back. Uh, there it is. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he has made him, who is him? Adam. In fact, let's go back. Right quick. Verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for the anointed, Hamashiach, as though our power did beseech you by us. We pray you in Hamashiach's stead, stay, be ye reconciled to God. That hooks up with John 14 and 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh up unto cometh up to the Father but by me. That's reconciliation. Okay, now, verse 21. Here it is. For he has made him, who is him? Quote, unquote, him, verse 20, spoke about Christ. Okay? So he made him our Lord, not Christ, but Hamashiach. Christ simply means the anointed, but it's in the Greek. Okay? The anointed... In Hebrew, okay, is Hamashiach, okay? For he has made him, who is him? Hamashiach, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, who are ignorantly referred to as Jesus. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. He knew no sin? Why? He was what? Not deceived. So Adam and Yahweh Shai, is the same spirit. They're the same person in a different body, in body form. One being physical, one being spiritual, okay? Now, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him by way of what? Reconciliation, okay? Now, let's go back. Let's go back. So as you can see here, Adam was not deceived, pursuant to the book of Timothy. Guess what? Yahweh Shah, Lord and Savior, also knew no sin. Some uh, some uh, verse of the Bible, uh, maybe the NLT says, uh, let's go back right quick so I can be sure where I'm at. Here. Real quick. Okay. Just give me a second. Okay, second of the six fifty four. I had to just keep up with that precept so I can continue on now. So he says, let's get it right quick in the blue letter Bible. Okay. Second Corinthians 5 21. We're going to get it uh, on the right hand side of your screen. I'll be reading from the King James Version. On the left hand side of your screen, I'll be reading references to New Living Translation. So let's go to Second Corinthians. Okay, um, let's look at the 21st verse in the New Living. For God made Hamashiach, who never sinned. Stop it, stop. Didn't the Bible say in 1 Timothy chapter 2, we just read a few uh, scriptures ago on your screen, that Adam was not deceived, but it was the woman that was in transgression of the law. So the woman sinned, Adam didn't sin, right? For God made Hamashiach, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right 
with God through Hamashiach. So Adam didn't sin, and Yahushua didn't sin. He knew no sin. Why? They are the only two. Why? Because in regeneration of spirits, y'all call it reincarnation, okay? But in regenerate, regeneration of spirits, guess what? Adam, Adam and Yahweh Shah, Lord and Savior, even to call Jesus, is the same entity. They're the same spirit, different body, different time. Okay? And actually, it's not all so much for a different time. Why? Because the Lord says, I'm the Alpha, I'm the Omega, I'm the beginning and the end. So you get to the end of a book, guess what? That's also the beginning of the book. Come on now. All right, now. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra 6, 54 right quick. All right, 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom you made Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom you have chosen. Who is that? Israel. Israel is the apple of his eye. Remember now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel at uh, Peniel when, when uh, Jacob wrestled the angel at Peniel, right? So his name was changed. So we're still speaking of who? The children of Israel. Let's go on. Let's go one more. Of all those have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because you made us the world for our sakes. Yes, the world was made under the rulership. The intention was to make the intention was for the uh, the uh, the world to be ruled by the children of Israel, hope elect, the princes, the governors, okay, uh, uh, belonging to the first fruits given to our power, Yahweh Shai, by way of who? Yahweh, our Father, our Creator, okay? Now, let's catch the next scripture. Here you go. Here you go. People just have this shit about. Oh, everybody can be saved. Just call on his name, honey. Really? Not according to this scripture. Listen, we look at it. Second Ezra 656. As for the other people, remember, the Lord chose Israel. And we're going to get Deuteronomy 76, Deuteronomy 32, 9 to further prove that. And then we'll continue to go ahead and lesson. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, you have said that they are nothing but beyond like spittle. Look at that. Did I make that up? Did I make that up? This is the spirit of truth speaking to Ezra. And what did he say? Huh? As for the other people which also come of Adam, you have said that they are nothing. Nothing. What's nothing? Zero. In fact, zero has a value. Nothing has no value. Okay, now, and what? But beyond like spittle, 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 spit. <laughs> Poof. You have said that they, are, that they are nothing but beyond like spittle, and you have a likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. A drop. So when I'm outside cutting grass right now, and it's 91 degrees outside, I ain't cutting grass today, but I was cutting grass the other day. I know it was hot up the other day than it is now out there with high humidity. When that sweat come off my brow and fall to the ground, the Lord has likened an abundance of these people to a drop falling off my brow. You know what I call that? I call that a low blow. Better yet, a mighty low blow. Damn it, boy. They keep on going. Now, now, so he says, who, so this is what the Lord, how the Lord views these people. Why? Because these people, these other nations, the 18 nations, these other 17 nations around the world, okay? All right? These nations were created to come against the children of Israel. Why? We couldn't keep the law, statutes, commandments, and orders of your house, Shem Shai. We want to serve other gods. The Lord says, since you want to serve these other people, and you don't want to listen to me, you don't want to do what, I, what, I, what I'm telling you to do and command you to do. I tell you what, I'm going to send you in the bondage, slavery, around the world, under these people, so you can see how these people are. The Lord created them this way. Remember the Lord says, on behalf of our enemy, his soul is not upright in him. He's not upright. He's the Lord who says, 
You're turning upside down of things. See? Come on, people. Now, let's continue on. All right. Uh, let's get into our article so we can... Uh, I don't want to do any babbling, okay? So the Lord says that in his scriptures, do not babble upon the earth because the Lord sits high and you are on the earth, okay? He is controlling all things, all at once. Why? He is who he is. Yahweh Bahashim Rashad. Yahweh means, means uh, his name, Yahweh means he is, he to be. He exists. Yahweh Shai's name, our Lord and Savior. He is our salvation, our deliverer in ancient Hebrew. Jesus, I don't know what the fuck that means. In fact, I've heard one time, Jesus is referencing, um, we know he's referencing Serapis Christos, right? But you can look that up on Google, Serapis Christos. It, it looks like Serapis Christos, okay? And um, that's what the Serapis with the S, S-E-R-A-P-I-S, Christos, right? But Jesus' name is was actually Iesus in the Greek, I-E-O-S-U-S, -S, which means hail Zeus. Stop. Has Zeus ever walked on this earth? Hell no. Has Zeus ever scratched his butt? Nope. Has Zeus ever dug his pinky finger in his nose to pull one out? No. Why? He is a mythological creature. Not real. Hello? This just ain't hard now. This ain't hard now. You can make it hard. Now, so let's go to our article right quick. Coming to us from finance, um, the, uh, I can't see that word up there, the Chronicles, coming to us, maybe it'll state it down here, okay, it was published seven hours ago, okay, 37,800 student loan borrowers, they all have been deceived, Revelation 12, 9, the devil has deceived the whole world. Who is the devil? Looking at it right there. Mm. The word devil, which means diablos, means the deceiver. Proverbs 29 and 2. When the wicked are in authority, the people mourn and groan. All these damn people in this article right now, according to the title, they mourn and groan. Who in charge? Raw chicken skin? Okay. Now, here we go. Well, let's continue. Let's pre let's finish that scripture. Proverbs twenty nine two. When the wicked are in authority, the people moan and groan. Don't take my word for it. <laughs> Proverbs 29 2, you have to forgive me. I'm be having some signal issues around here right now. In the state of South Carolina, it's been a lot of storming, a lot of heavy uh, lightning, a lot of storms constantly every so many days, which I ain't complaining because the Lord is sending rain upon the earth. You don't get no rain, you don't have nothing to eat. Now, we know that soon and very soon, according to prophecy, the Lord is going to cut off from the land food supply. Okay, that's famine. Okay, you can read that in uh, Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 13. Okay, you can also read that in the book of Sirach, chapter uh, 32, 29, I believe. Okay, now let's keep on. Proverbs 29, 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Are the righteous in authority right now, all over the earth? Hell no, everybody complaining about something. Gas high. 
grocery high. These people coming at me, the debt collectors, the damn uh, uh, Title Max uh, tow truck, bro, round here, round my house. I got to keep moving my damn car. Yeah, we under the curses. Okay, Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68. You know, and people cut my damn lights off again. This year I owe five thousand four hundred twenty-five dollars, and I just got my, I just got these lights on in my name about two months ago. God damn, I work all the overtime. When the hell am I home to run up a light bill like this? Call them people. You call them and get what? Well, I, that's why. I, that's what my computer is showing me. How in the hell, lady? When the righteous in authority, these people rejoice, but when the wicked bear rule. People mourn. Are not the people mourning now? Are not the people mourning? Also, who is mourning? The 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 prophets of great millstone all over the earth on the highways and the hedges. All of our videos are showing you and pointing out to you these different things that are unlawful. Okay, how I know they're unlawful? Simple. Isaiah twenty one. In fact, let's get that in. Uh, do that. All right. Um, Isaiah 10 and 1. And my article, I'm gonna I'm gonna read just a few bars on it. And because the article is gonna speak for itself, tie that bank to the lesson, you will have been reproved according to the name of Yahweh Shai of the filth of this place and how this place got the people all screwed up. Why? There is no law here. Okay? There is no law, no law of righteousness here. There's laws of confusion and laws of evil. But no righteousness here. That's why everybody all screwed up. And everybody pissing, morning, groaning, cussing, and fussing, and biting daily. All day long. You lay down to go to sleep, something bites you. Damn it. What the hell is that? <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> now, let's go ahead on. Isaiah 10 and 1. Assyria is God's instrument. What's Assyria? Assyria is referencing who? The captivities, are we not in bondage here where we were delivered into the hands of our enemies? America, Babylon the Great, hello. Assyria is God's instrument, war, which means war and destruction unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. Did I not say that? There's no righteous laws here. Decrees are laws. There's no righteous, righteous laws here at all, period. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous, unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. That's okay, in the NLT on the left side of your screen. What sorrow awaits the unjust judges and those who issue unfair laws? Verse 2, they deprive the poor of justice and deny the rights of the needy among my people. They prey on widows and take advantage of orphans. Verse 3, what will you do when I punish you, when I send disaster upon you from a distant land? To whom will you turn to for help? Where will your treasures be safe? You will stumble along as prisoners or lie among the dead. Oh, but when... The Lord's anger will not be satisfied. His fist is still poised to strike. Who is his fist? Who is his fist? Yahweh Shai, his right arm, his right hand. Hey, come on now. As you can see there, and it continues on. Verse 5, on the left-hand side, you can do the translation. What sorrow awaits a seer? It's a rod of my anger. I use it as a club to express my anger. I am sending Assyria against a godless nation, against the people with whom I am angry. Okay? Judgment against Assyria. That's America, Babylon the Great. Okay? Now, I am sending Assyria against a godless nation, against the people whom I am angry. Angry Assyria will plunder them, trampling them like a dirt beneath his feet. Now, verse 5 is referencing how the Lord is going to use Assyria as, a, as an instrument, a rod, against who? The children of Israel who left, who left out, did not return back to Yahweh, Shem, Shabbat, Jeremiah 314, okay? All right? And even with this article right now, let's get back to it so we can uh, bring this video to a close. Because I have a tendency to go off a little bit, not go off, but go way out.
other than what I need to be doing. Okay. 37,000, 37, basically 38,000 student loan borrowers will receive $3.3 million checks after a debt relief company falsely promised loan forgiveness in Washington. Never trust an enemy. Should you even, children of Israel, should you even be in a position to pay for an education? Hell no. Why? First Corinthians 10, uh, First Corinthians chapter 27, uh, First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 says what? The Lord chose the foolish things to confound the wise. Everybody claimed they all Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized, right? Let's see here. Let's go to John 14, 26 and see what the Lord says about this. Okay? All right? So, uh, uh, in fact, we're going to also get uh, scripture out of Timothy. Okay, John uh, 14, 26. Watch this now. If I, yeah, see, I'm Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. The Lord, he, Jesus, he's a lot of my life. That's funny. How come you don't do these things that I don't? How come you're not able to apply these things? What the hell is going on? What? He do for me and can't do for you? Uh-uh. He's someone laying down on the job. Okay, now, John 14, 26. But the comfort, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my names, he shall teach you all things. Look at that. Look at that. He shall teach you all things. So why in the hell are you even going to a college or some other technical school, professional school, to learn some bullshit? You, you know what you learn? Lies. You learn lies. Why? Because you know what? Let's get it. We'll get it also. Let's finish the scripture. He shall teach you all things. Let's go to the left-hand side of your screen. New Living Translation. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything. Why in the hell? Are you going to a college, racking up a whole bunch of goddamn bills and shit, shit that you can't even pay. You don't know people right now. There are people everywhere, all over the world, all over the planet, that can't make a decision between buying groceries and paying damn light bill. They can't make a decision. They buy less stuff. And God forbid it. Watch this now. I'm sure somewhere down the line. Remember, you remember the episode of Good Times? When um I think it was that Lady Wanda, was it the Lady I don't think it was Wanda, uh, which was played, I think, by um Miss Pearl from two two seven. Um uh there was a lady that stayed on that floor that was she was having meatloaf or something like that and and they had uh, somebody in the building had come up until uh, and, and had made it known in the show that um, in the series that she was having a whole bunch of cans of dog food delivered. Yeah, y'all know where I'm, where I'm going to with this. I can stop right there. But there are some people, and I'm not saying this. Oh, hell, dog food ain't no more than meat. Shit, a can of dog food cheaper than a can of sugar peas. <laughs> yeah, ain't no but meat. I wonder how many, how much of that damn meat fell on the goddamn floor, and it's probably unclean meat, okay? Because, um, um, in fact, that happened with one of our fast food chains. They had discovered that horse meat was in the food. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not gonna stay off of that because, but y'all see where I'm going to with this, see? But when the father sends the advocate as my representative. That is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Okay? So as you can see here, it is the Lord that's going to teach. Watch this now. Let's get another one. We're actually going to begin to close. I really didn't even have no desire to read that article because it's a long, drawn-out, goddamn article. But the title itself says it all. Okay? Okay? Now, see, I mean, come on now. All right? Now, let's get our uh, first Timothy 6 and 20. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch, we never can't put this precept in it. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. Okay. Let's read it in the New Living Translation on the left side of your screen. Timothy, God, what God has entrusted to you. What is he, what is he speaking of? There's knowledge, there's truth, there's understanding in the spirit. 
Timothy, God what God has entrusted to you. Avoid godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. So-called knowledge? Wait a minute. I can't remember who said it. I don't know if it was a philosopher or... Um, but a man once said, if you're looking for a career, go to college. If you're looking for enlightenment, read the Bible. Talk amongst yourselves. Some, hold on. Some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. May God's grace be with you all. Okay? Now, Let's look up, uh, we're going to go on verse 20, New, uh, King James. We're going to look up the word uh, knowledge and see what it means. I think it's gnosis. I think it's gnosis in the Greek. Mm. Uh, come on, man, you ain't doing right. Boy. I need verse 20, not 19. <laughs> come on now. Um. I believe it's Gnosis. Uh, yeah, there it is right there. It comes to us from the Greek. Okay, let's hear it in the Greek. Strong's G, 1108. Gnosis. Gnosis. Okay, now it says, uh, knowledge signifies in general intelligence and understanding. Okay. Uh, the general knowledge of the quote unquote Christian religion, okay, which we have to be careful with these kinds of words because the Christian religion, first of all, the very first Christians were who? Well, who were the very first Christians, okay? They were the Israelites, okay? Christ means what? The anointed. So who were the first anointed ones? Okay, children of Israel, okay? Now, uh, the deeper, more perfect, and enlarged knowledge of this religion, such as belongs to the more advanced, as in, as in what? Uh, yeah, I have a, I have four degrees. I'm working on my doctorates and still don't know shit. <laughs> All right, you don't know what you need to know as far as the scripture is concerned. Because when the Lord comes down, He's gonna judge you according to where it's written in His Word, and you're gonna be stuck out of gas. Okay, now. Uh, moralism as such is seen in right living. Really? See, you see that right there? Look at it. Look at it. Uh, first John point one, beloved, believe not in the spirit, but try the spirits by the spirit. Moral wisdom such as is seen in right living. Well, if you were living right according to the righteousness of your heart by Shem and Shai, then guess what? You won't be dealing with no damn knowledge of science. See? They, yeah, they do this, you know, they do this. They, they catch people up in, in the crap. Okay, let's see here right quick. See if we can get anything else out of this. Uh, let's tap that. Let's view that out. Um, the knowledge of things which belongs to God. What? Then the John 14, 26, where it says, My Father is in the comfort of the Holy Spirit in my name. He shall teach you all things. Stop. So if he's going to teach me everything that I need to know by way of his spirit and spirit of truth, then what the hell is this shit down here? And tell us understanding. Let's start at the top of your screen. So you can read what I'm reading. And tell us knowledge. The general knowledge of the Christian religion. What? <laughs> Hello? Come on now. These two, these two ideas contradict each other. John 14, 26 is contradicting this shit here. Knowledge of science falsely so-called. The Lord tell you that the knowledge of science is, is falsely so-called. False teaching, false knowledge, false doctrine, false prophet, false. You saying hard? You can make it hard now. Okay. Now, so as you can see there, let's go through and look at the root word of this. The root word, the etymology, is what? Strong's G one thousand ninety seven, Gnosko, Gnosko. To learn, to know, come to know, get a knowledge of perceived feel. Feel? Bam. Red alert. Red alert. Feel. We're not operating in our feelings, our emotions. We're operating according to who? 
the word of Yahweh and Shemusha. You don't like it. Like, for instance, watch this. Well, what happened? So, hey, you heard about birthday, birthday me? What happened? You know, she, the Lord called. Oh, you know, she was sick back yeah, a couple of times ago. She, had, she, she got better than she got. Then she went down. Oh, you know, hospice don't come in. You know what I mean when hospice come in. Yeah, the only way out. Yeah, she passed away. Did she really pass away? Did the Lord really call her home? Did she? Did he? Remember right now, the Lord called her home. That's Zion. Okay? Now, the Lord, okay, now her spirit is in the heavens resting right now, right? But she's already received her judgment already that she did not keep the law, statutes, commandments, and ordinances, right? Okay? Of Yahweh, Hashem, Yashah, right? Because only those kind of people that talk like that is in some damn church somewhere. You know, so-and-so Baptist, uh, so-and-so and so AME, Church of God in Christ, some more crap, right? All right? Which is the tabernacle of Edom. Lord says, let the children of Israel go. Let my people go so that they may worship me in the wilderness. Why in the hell are you in a damn building? See what I'm saying? These are those individuals which we are familiar with in our neighborhoods, in our towns, on our streets. Our aunts, our uncles, two-thirds of the house of Israel. Okay? So is she home? She's her spirit is resting. Right? Already received judgment. Soon or very soon, her ass being late, burning some damn it. All right, that's all. I ain't going to tell you that. That's YouTube. Okay? But that's scripture, is it not? I mean, uh, that's spoken of in Isaiah 66, 66, 15 to 17. Now, yes, in the kingdom, the two-thirds will be regenerated back to the elect as children of the elect, and they will not be able to sin anymore. Okay? And the Lord will remember our covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with us. The Abrahamic covenant, Genesis 17 and 7, right? Right. And you can read more about that in Hebrews 8 and 10, Hebrews 10, 16, and Jeremiah 31, 33. Now. So I think that's all we're going to do here. Um, I don't want this to be long at all. The Lord says, never trust thine enemy. These people trusted these schools, per se, Paid out all this damn money. Then couldn't pay back the money. Hold on. Isaiah 10 and 1. Now it's interest compounded on the money. Although you ain't born no more money. You probably can't get no damn job in your major. You probably, Come on now. Never trust thine enemy. Come on now. They will receive $3.3 million checks after a debt relief company falsely promised loan forgiveness. Stop. That was under the uh, 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 the U.S. Uh, government had did that for a period of time, but they stopped doing that right on that de- right before that debt ceiling bill come through. Now you trust if the U.S. government is doing this, why do you what? How is it that you trust a private company, which is not the government, to be the? Yeah, but I tell you one damn thing: they took your goddamn money, didn't they? Did they give that back? No, the FTC is now set up. To make them give it back. What? <laughs> you trusted these people, you trusted the enemy. Huh? You trusted them. And look how they got you all screwed. I bet you credit all mess up. I bet you can't get a damn loan for a damn dresser. I, I just want to finance these two nights, man. No, baby, you credit too low. We can't trust you. Yeah, because you trusted them. Now you screwed. I hope this lesson has been edifying. <laughs> okay, and as you can see here, there are other videos here as well. Student loan forgiveness, regardless of how Supreme Court rules, you could still, still what? Don't never trust thine enemy. The Lord is always teaching us and showing us what to do and what not to do. These people have a particular spirit in them. They're going to catch your ass up in a trap. Come on now. Look at this. Keep on it. But I think that's all I want to state that Biden's $400 billion student loan forgiveness program could end soon if if efforts to block. Biden's $400 billion student loan forgiveness program could end soon if efforts to block program are successful. And I know that's, a, that's according to that title, that's a bunch of damn traps there. 
Many borrowers often have to decide between buying food and other necessities of making student loan payments. Wait a minute. Did I not say that? When I was talking about the dog food good time bit? Did I not say that? You cannot make this stuff up. This is common sense. The people don't focus on what's important at the time. They do all this extra other crap. Remember the Lord said in his words, he says, I will shall remove the mirth from the earth. With mirth is rejoicing and gladness. Right? Did he not say that? Right now, if you go to the mall, oh yeah, I'm going to the mall on Saturday. I'm going to go up there and try to get me an outfit and try to get me some little cheap sneakers. Yeah, go on over there. Next thing you know, you're running for your damn life. Pow, pow, pow. You know what I'm talking about? The Lord says, I'm going to take that spirit away from the earth. Yet, because you don't read and study, even if you didn't understand the scriptures in the spirit, because you don't read and study, draw nine to me and I will draw nine to you. Because you won't read and study, you're not even aware of these things. Oh, yeah, you know, so and so and so, we come over, we're going to have a cook, little cookout, put something on the grill. Yeah, we're going to, um, how about 30, 40 people? We're going to have the music, we're going to have this bumping. You know, bring your Bluetooth speaker and this and that and the other, yada, yada, yada. And we're going to have wings on the grill. We're going to have, watch this, we're going to have wings on the grill and we're going to have some barbecue meat. Coming against the Lord, not keeping his commandments. Next thing you know, Somebody drive by, pa pa pa. People are running, people are running over people, stepping people's face, and and oh, here's another. Somebody crawls into a damn cobra pipe. Yeah, when well, you crawl in the cobra pipe, what the fuck is that on the other end of the cobra pipe growling? Rawr. Hello. All the Zestman Edifier has come to the honor, glory, and power of Yahweh, Bishim, and Shah, Bishim, and Takodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles a great millstone who rule well, who teach this gospel and push this gospel to the four corners of the earth, risking their lives and freedom to do so, especially in these times. Peace and salutations unto the hope of elect of the house of Israel. Um, here's my closeout precept. Jeremiah 3.14, whenever the hell he comes up. Okay, let's see. Uh, that's probably on me. See, can I see? Obviously. Turn, as in return, turn or backsliding children, said Lord Powell, for I am married unto you. I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, heart means mine, which shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Again, I hope this has been edifying. I will post Deuteronomy 76. And do let's get it now. Because this is what I was going to when I was going over second chapter six, fifty four, fifty six, as in spittle. I have said that they are nothing, but I didn't cover it. Uh, let's cover it now. Deuteronomy chapter seven and six. Who is this Bible written to? Okay. For you, for thou art an holy people. Who is thou, children of Israel? This is the Abrahamic covenant, Genesis 17 and 7. Also Genesis 21, 12, Genesis 17, 21. You can look up these scriptures. Okay, now. For you are a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Second Ezra 6, 54. Out of Adam come we all, remember that. And the people whom you have chosen. That's who? Israel. Okay. For you are holy people. Who? Israel. Unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. Who is thee? Israel. To be a special people unto himself. Who? Israel. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Who are we talking about now? Israel. Let's get Deuteronomy 32 and 9. I'm going to close.
For the Lord's portion is his people. 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 Who is people? Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob. Was not Jacob's name changed to Israel? Come on now, this is not hard. You can make this hard. But it's not hard. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. What? Jacob is who? His people. You can make it hard, but it's really not hard. Okay? Um, I had one more precept that I wanted to bring out, but I think I'll leave it there. Until the next time. Shalom.